remember, really, really light. To me, this is not really painting right now. This is sketching out the basics of the eye and start to articulate this. Pupil's pretty small, so I want to be careful. I don't make it too big. If you do something and it's like way too dark, dab your paper towel with a little bit of water and you can just pull it down like that. A really bright highlight here. So I'm just masking it off. I don't want it to get colored in. Get this a little more pronounced. That might be all I want to do until I start putting in some of the more dramatic areas. Maybe something like this just to like fill in a little bit. We'll go back in and we'll definitely layer a lot more later on. I actually think this is a pretty good blue. Block in darker shadows. Like here, there's a lot. This is a very dramatic shadow down there at the bottom. And then there's one here. I wish I could be one of those like bold, daring people, but I don't know. Watercolor makes me sort of apprehensive. So I feel like I can't be risky with it. Maybe a little bit of orange coming up here would be good. And there's like sort of a line of pink. Pink over here. That's a little scary looking. That looks like they're bleeding, which I don't like, but we'll fix it at some point. You got to be careful with that pink. You actually can see the veins. Like that actually is not that common. This is like a little purpley. If you're painting and your painting feels like mushy, that's fine. That, that's totally how it should be. Watercolor is like that. It, it feels like a slippery fish. It's got a mind of its own. It wants to do what it wants. And a lot of times that has nothing to do with what you want it to do. <laughs> so that's the problem. The white of the eyes is a little tricky. People think that it's supposed to be like white, white, but it never really is. It's always got a little tint of something. Ooh, that's way too dark. Okay, something like that. Yeah, just like a little wash. The white of the page, it can be like too bright and you don't really want that. You gotta look at what's surrounding the eye. That's what's tricky about it. I'm gonna scrub down some of these veins because I think I put them in a little bit too soon. So I'm just making them watery and I'm scrubbing them down. Ew, this got a little bit too like red. So I'm gonna see if I can really blob in some like serious color. I'd rather overdo it than underdo it. It's better. Showing some of the texture because actually skin is not that smooth. I use this wet sponge, get the water out. I just do this. It's a lot easier to control that way. So I'm going to use the Payne's gray and some of the burnt umber pretty dry. I'm not going to make it all watery and stuff. People think they have to use watercolor super watery, but you don't. Sometimes you want to, but not all the time. Like sometimes it can not be like that at all. So don't tell yourself it has to look like that. People associate watercolors with looking like that, but they don't always look like that. Let's get the edge of the eyeball in there. Fine for things to get worse, for things to feel more frustrating later on. That is just part of the process. It's nothing to do with you guys. I'll do a little bit more shadow. Yep, it's all about layering. French ultramarine with this alizarin crimson. So I'm going to get back in here with the cerulean. And it has this like pattern to it. So let's try to add some of that pattern. Um, because that, that definitely makes a difference. You don't want to just paint it flat. That's not going to look very good. The lines of the iris, they're sort of like coming outwards. I don't know why. It's, it's always eyes. Like people are so into eyes. Like they're so mesmerizing, I think. Maybe it's because we communicate with our eyes. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. This whole area, I can add these more watery effects where I'm like letting the paint bleed on purpose windows that are being reflected in the back. That's that's the shape that you guys see me painting back here. Ultramarine never lets me down. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to like beef up down here. Ooh, oh, that looks terrible. Okay, <laughs> Let, let's get rid of that. Okay. <laughs> we need to work on this pupil in here. 
because it's starting to look really flat. And so I feel like if I start adding some of these veins, it'll give the eye a lot more variation. Take my paper towel and I'm just gonna blot some of this stuff. I feel like in here, some of this is drying, which is good. Maybe some more shapes going on. Really dark. And then here too. I feel like I didn't do enough on the eyeball. Like the eyeball looks so boring and flat to me. I think this should be a little bit more. Oh yeah, yeah, that does look a little bit better. Okay. I have no patience for the dry time. I'm like, come on, dry. I'll have multiple paintings going at the same time. You get tired of certain things and then it's like, ah, I don't want to work on it anymore. So if you do it here, I would not have been able to put down that stroke before. I sort of want to put in there's these freckles down here. Maybe some cobalt blue would be good. Couple strokes coming in like this. Because there is like a lot of texture in there. I don't think I got remotely the amount of texture. Pupil sort of disappeared. Really dark, this one spot here. Maybe do a little blending in here. It's almost like a bloodshot eye. Blech. It's like a little terrifying. I am going to smudge some of this out because it's way too harsh. Definitely don't want to leave it that way. There's a little pink here. I don't know. There's like a vein down here. You don't usually get photographs that are close up enough to see the veins. When people paint veins in their paintings, it sometimes just looks strange because it's like too exaggerated. But I think this is going to work actually. If you have things too perfect, it doesn't feel natural. So maybe that's what it is. It's just you need something to feel more flawed. When things are too perfect, they don't look right. A couple more speckles, more freckly things. Maybe a little bit more red. Yeah, I'm feeling better about the red. Let's just really throw down some of these darks. Because I feel like I'm sort of losing. Maybe darken here. A little bit more speckling. Then I think I am going to do the eyelashes. Because the eyelashes, again, they're, they're like really prominent. Like you can really see them well. Yeah, some of these are pretty small. So I'm going to make them real small. And then I'm going to dab them again. Put it down, take it away. Put it down, take it away. You have to be conscious of how harsh a mark is. Like is the mark really hard and crisp? Or is it more flowy? Yeah, and sometimes I even use my finger. <laughs> like if my towel is not nearby and I'm just like feeling lazy. This just needs a little more. Oh, and I lost some of that red. <sighs> you guys ever feel like you just put things down and then they disappear? You're like, I thought I put that down, but I guess not. Maybe a little more veiny stuff. Like this is a really bloody looking eye, guys. Like I did not mean that. A lot of people get very focused on the upper lid, and that's fine. I mean, the upper lid is very important, but it's not everything. Maybe a little bit more brown up here. Just want to get a little more variation. I feel like that's a little bit too pink. Okay, more dramatic stroke. I think I'm going to start putting in the eyelashes. You can, like, really see these. People think they're so perfect, but the thing is, if you make them too perfect, they look like fake eyelashes. They sort of like cross over each other a lot. You can't make them too nice. That's the trick. They're all different directions. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. Down here, there are eyelashes, but they're really light. Maybe that's a little bit better. We're gonna add more eyelashes, but this time they're not gonna be so harsh looking. There's some really dark ones over here. How did I miss that? Make them a little messier. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like mine are too nice. They should look really like ratty and weird. <laughs> I'm gonna soften the eyes, the, the edge of the iris. I feel like this is way too sharp. I am gonna do like another pass of red. I believe, I mean, it's like you think I would have done enough red by now, but I guess not. 
a slight gloss of red on the lower lid. Painting over the eyelashes now. This should be darker too, jeez. I don't know, I'm not psyched about my iris. Is this gonna work? I don't know, let's just try it. Usually there's no harm in that. And especially here, it's like what I'm adding is so minimal. It's really not that much. Dab some of these spots. A little bit of gray in here. Just scrubbing some of that. A few more freckles, right? A couple more. People have blemishes, people have freckles, they have all kinds of things. It's, it's really good to add in those little things that give the skin more character. Otherwise, it looks artificial. Like you need these little blemishes to keep things interesting. Some of them are bigger than others, and it is good to look at how they're different shapes. The, the blemishes and the freckles, they're not all the same. It shows it's such a different person than what we looked at at the top. Ugh, it's too harsh. A couple more freckles up here. Let's dab that. Loosen this edge, make it a little bit softer. Sometimes you can do that just with like a wet brush. Same thing here. I'm just like scrubbing the paint, just loosening it up. A little bit too harsh looking. I didn't add enough variation in the like pink tissuey part. Got a little flat. Up there, get that a little softer looking. A couple more freckles are important for the portrait. Sometimes when I'm painting things, I just like make up stories for like who the person is and what they're doing. I don't know, it's pretty funny. One more pass on the eyelashes. I think I'm almost done. See, the way I know I'm done is that I'm sort of like picking at the painting. Like I'm not adding that much. I'm adding some, but what I'm adding is pretty minimal. Mm -hmm.